It's two days before a major election. In election 2010 is the first time that a brand new political phenomenon known as the Tea Party is going to have a chance to make its presence known. Now we've heard a lot about these folks, but I'm going to, with no spin, give you the opportunity to hear from some of the main Tea Party leaders in their own words as they gathered for the last Tea Party before the big election. Uh, I need, need two, two introductions, obviously. Um, yeah, my name is Andrean Dodge. I'm main coordinator for the Tea Party Patriots, which is a national group. And I'm here to say, well, the Republicans look like they might do fairly well this time. That's a good thing. However, we all know what happens when the Republicans get in power. How many of you remember the uh, contract from America? How long did that last before they screwed it up? Six months? Eight months? Nine? Maybe? So, you know, our work is just starting. And the problem we have is, for a large amount of people in the Tea Party movement, you've just been Republican shills. I know it's tempting. You want to be on a winning campaign. It's great to get involved. But if we're going to convince anybody else in this state that we're not the cranky wing of the Republican Party, which I don't think we are, you need to get out there November 3rd and start actually criticizing some of the people you got in. Keeping their, their feet to the fire and making sure that the Republican Party doesn't think we're just free labor, very enthusiastic to get out every two years to get them elected again. And you've got to make it very clear to any of those getting in that if they screw up, we'll replace you in two years or four years or six years. Unlike generally what happens with politics, people have very short memories. I'm hoping that the Tea Party movement have memories like, if you, would, if you will excuse the pun, elephants. Elephants never forget. Neither should the Tea Party movement. And the people that we do elect into office this, this Tuesday, some of them will be good people. Some of them have just tried to pull the wool over our eyes. We'll find that out pretty quick. But regardless of that, we're going to be throwing these people into the lion's den. They're going to be... The DC monster is going to try to just swallow them right up. They think it's politics as usual. We need to make sure that the people that we elect into office have character, honor, and they follow the Constitution. We must make sure that we support them and that we help them in every way that we possibly can. The way to do that is to spread the word. We must continue to spread the word. We have many, many tools available to us. We have our websites. We have Facebook, Twitter. Every time you see something, an article in a newspaper, you can usually share it on Facebook, or you can Twitter it. We need to continue to do that. Facebook is a real good tool. I post on my page all the time. I have over 800 friends on Facebook. Every time I post on my profile, it goes on their profile. And then if they comment on it, it goes to all their friends. So, I mean, with just a couple of clicks of a mouse, we can literally reach thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands, millions of people. So we need to stand up. You and I, we stand together now at one of the most pivotal times in our lifetime. The history books of the future generations are ablaze with our voices and actions of today. May we have the strength and courage and dedication to collapse the corruption that our fear and neglect has let fester for decades. For years, you patriots on our own soil have been just random scattered voices, just a breeze through the dense forest. I'm a baseball coach for a school and for a little league, and I've been doing it for 10 years. How do you know if you're out when you're playing baseball? Well, if you're at bat, you get three strikes, you're out. How do you know that? As a coach and as an umpire, we have a rule book. If you don't know whether you're out or safe, I take out my rule book and I show you the rule book. Well, this country is obviously not following the rule book, the United States Constitution and the Maine Constitution. And I don't mean the unwritten Constitution that's being taught in our schools today. And if you want proof of that, I've got it and I've fought it.
We have a problem with government in Maine and at the federal level. The government in Maine and in the U.S. has gone away from our founding fathers' basic principles on which this country was founded. And these fundamental principles are supposed to be protected by the U.S. Constitution, but also by us. The Constitution is just a piece of paper if it's not protected by the citizens of this country. For example, the federal government the federal government's new national health care law. The U.S. government owning states and private businesses such as banks and car companies. The federal government owns two-thirds of this country. Article 1, Section 8. You can read it. It's unconstitutional. We can do better and I know Maine can do better. Our state government is involved in manipulating and interfering with the free market economy by controlling us through legislation. We can do better. The railroads, the woods industry, the fishing industry. I just watched the last sardine factory close up where I'm from in Hancock County. I see ladies and gentlemen that worked their whole lives on those fishing lines where my mother used to work. Their jobs gone because of government and legislation and regulation saying, well, we can't fish anymore. Those ladies went home. Now, I don't know how you can ex explain to a 60-year-old lady that's been standing on that line her whole life that there is, no, there ain't no more fish out there when Brazil and Canada and Mexico, they got all kinds of sardine factories. This was the last sardine factory in the United States. Well, I didn't hear anything that sounded very radical to me at the Tea Party. It was more like the silent majority of middle class America standing up and letting their voices be heard and getting involved in their government the way they're supposed to. Maine Web News would like to remind you to vote on Tuesday, and we'll be back here late Tuesday night for your results. Experience the future of Maine News today at MainWebNews.com. Consider making www.mainwebnews.com your homepage. You'll be able to use our start page search engine which does not record your IP address or track your searches like other search engines.